Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Hey, Hugh. <laughs> I did it again. I was on mute. Hi, hey, Anthony. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> we were just talking about that. That's one of the phrases that should go down in 2020 history. You're on mute. You're on mute. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to welcome everybody. We'll get started very shortly. We just want to give people a chance to log on who may be having technical difficulty and let people in the room, but welcome. All right, welcome everybody. We'll get started in a minute or so. I uh, just want to give people a chance to log in. All right, let's get started, guys. People will still be jumping on, but my name's Anthony Singleton of the American Dairy Association Northeast. Thank you for joining us for our Score Big Field to Play 60 funding opportunity. Uh, just wanna thank you all for participating and this couldn't be possible without the charitable donations of our dairy farmers who work hard on our behalfs every day and we work hard on their behalf. Um, just a couple of things before we get started. Um, Touchdown status is coming to an end very soon. So you wanna make sure that you reach touchdown status by April 1st, so that you're invited to our end of the year virtual celebrations. Um, also, you wanna keep an eye out for a recording of this webinar, just in case you missed something and wanna hear um, more about it. Um, we're super excited for you guys to participate today. Um, so without further ado, I wanna introduce my colleague, Jenny Hunt from MMS, who's gonna take us through all of the tips, tools, and strategies for a successful innovation. Welcome, Jenny. Thank you, Anthony, and hi to everybody. Um, I'm so glad you could join this webinar today, and um, hopefully you'll walk away with some helpful information about um, getting some funding for your school. Um, so we're talking about funds for Fuel Up to Play 60, um, which is um, a program available to all enrolled schools um, and with some qualifications. Um, and Anthony, if you want to go to the next slide, that's good. Thanks. There you go. So um, <clears throat> the idea of funds for Fuel Up to Play 60 is to help you jumpstart healthy changes in your school. Um, the program offers up to $4,000 a year for schools, 
And um, we intend that money to be used to help to implement one of the healthy eating and one of the physical activity plays from the Fuel Up to Play 60 playbook. Um, and this year, um, we only have one, one open application per year. So um, this year, and it, it's now that you're applying, able to apply for funding for next school year. And we have a special offer um, that is available in this year's application. And that is to apply for a smoothie kit um, for your school. And uh, that will be valued at $2,000, which would be your healthy eating portion. Um, I'll get into more of those details in just a minute, but I just wanted to give you a preview to listen for that because that's a special offer that we're doing this, this year. Um, so I said your schools are eligible if they're enrolled in Fuel Up to Play 60. There are a couple um, caveats to that. Number one, you have to be enrolled in the program. Um, also, next one, Anthony. There we go. Um, you have to have a registered program advisor at your school. So that means that, um, Anthony, I think we're a slide ahead. Can you back up a minute? There we go. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so that means that on the dashboard, somebody has checked off for your school that they will serve as a program advisor. Anybody can apply from your school, but there just has to be a program advisor uh, registered at your school. They don't have to be the ones applying. And the other caveat is that schools need to participate in the National School Lunch Program to be eligible to apply for funds for people up to play 60. Now I'm ready for the next slide, Anthony. <laughs> Great. Um, so I said it's $4,000 available to you. That is split between the healthy eating portion and the physical activity portion. Um, I'm going to talk about physical activity first. You could just apply for up to $2,000 for physical activity. Healthy eating, you um, if you want to balance it between the two, um, healthy eating, uh, you could apply for up to $2,000 for healthy eating. But you can take all $4,000 and apply that to just healthy eating. The reason for that is, let's not forget who is funding this. It's America's Dairy Farmers and coming from a Dane. Um, so obviously the healthy eating portion, while we're interested in physical activity, certainly um, the healthy eating portion is near and dear to everybody's heart. So um, that's why um, it is encouraging that healthy eating up to $4,000, physical activity um, up to $2,000, but you can't go over the $4,000 there for the entire application. Um, and it is an online application that is available for this. And um, you would go to your dashboard, if you're familiar with that, is enrolling in Fuel Up to Play 60, and you go to your dashboard. I'm going to walk you through that in just a, just a minute. Um, but you would go to your dashboard, and you would find um, access to the application there. Um, like I mentioned, the application is available right now. It opened um, the earlier this month on the 10th of March, and it is open until April 28th. So you have uh, plenty of time to open it up. Um, once you're in there and opening and working on it, it is, um, you can save the application um, and come back and work on it. So it's not like it's a, you have to sit down and do it all at once. So just so you know that. Um, if you do apply, um, notifications on the decision on your application uh, will go out in early June. And then we would be distributing um, the funding and if you applied for equipment like the smoothie kit, um, they, those would both be uh, delivered to your school at, at the start of the school year, the 21-22 school year. So like August, September timeframe. Okay, next slide, please. Thanks. Okay, so I mentioned the smoothie kit offer and uh, over there on the right hand side, you see a picture of everything that is included in that. Um, we have a, an immersion blender, a 16-inch commercial grade immersion blender. Blender Over to the left of that um, it are two buckets. So those are mixing buckets that come with lids. So for mixing the smoothies. And then you get the four uh, cooler bags that um, can be used to transport the smoothies once they're made or anything else that um, you might want to use those cooler bags for, transporting milk through your school or whatever it may be. And also um, the rolling utility cart is included. So that, and then there are some promotional materials that come along with it. Like there's a pull-up banner and there's some signage that you can have that you could use in your school just to promote the smoothies. So that's what that package entails. Like I said, it's valued at $2,000. 
And uh, when you go to apply for funds, you need to select one healthy eating play and one physical activity play. So what you would do if you wanted to apply for this smoothie kit is we have a special play designed for this smoothie kit. And that's called, it's called the Highlight Healthy Foods Play. And uh, you can see it written right there. Then um, it will have after that the Healthy Start Smoothie Kit. Just want to give you a heads up. There are two versions of Highlight Healthy Foods when you go to apply. There is one that just says Highlight Healthy Foods Go Nutritious. If you applied for that, then you would be applying for funding. But if you want this smoothie kit, you would go to the Highlight Healthy Foods with the smoothie kit after it. And that means that you're not going to be getting funding for healthy eating. You're going to be getting the smoothie kit. And then the rest of the up to the $4,000 would be available for physical activity. Um, and as I mentioned before, this uh, smoothie kit would be delivered at back to school time. Um, back when it comes to August, September timeframe so that you can implement it next year. Okay, next slide, please. There you go. Okay, um, so like I said, funding, um, it's used to help you implement your healthy eating and physical activity plays. And one thing that you really have to remember is to include dairy in your healthy eating plan. Um, like I said, let's not forget that the America's dairy farmers are funding these um, applications um, coming th through um, America Dairy Association nor Northeast. So um, they have a very strong interest in dairy. So don't forget to put that in your application. <laughs> um, that's really important. And um, uh, also, I just wanna mention that here are your healthy eating plays. You see that there are five listed there, um, dealing with breakfast, farm to school, a fighting hunger play, one-on-food um, -on -food waste to help reduce that in your schools, and then the highlight healthy foods. And, and there I mentioned that there are two versions of that, like I've already said, the one for the smoothie kit and one to get funding. Then on the right-hand side, we have all the physical activity plays. And like I said, you can apply for up to $2,000 in physical activity. And there are the, um, there's all in all abilities, um, play in class physical activity breaks, a play on flag football, a flag on re, re, refreshing recess, and another one on um, starting a walking club at your school, walk this way. Um, there is There are a few documents on the website that can help you in figuring out what you want to use that you're funding for um, to help implement these plays. Uh, down there at the bottom, you see the blinking little light uh, that's called Funding Ideas. There is a Funding Ideas document exactly, and then some other resources. And I'll get to that in just a minute and tell you um, what, where they are and uh, what they have to offer. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so I mentioned you have to be enrolled in Fuel Up to Play 60 to apply for this. So if you are not already enrolled in the program, um, I think probably everybody knows it is a free program. So you don't have, there's no obligation there, but it is completely free. But you'd wanna go to fueluptoplay60.com. And then this is a picture of the homepage over there on the right-hand side. And up at the top, there is a light blue button. I know it's small and not real easy to see here, but there is that light blue button where that red arrow is pointing is a join now button. So if you aren't enrolled, you would click on that button after that's right on the homepage there. Click on that button. That will walk you through the uh, process of enrolling, giving your name, name, rank, serial number, you know, that, that, that kind of drill. And, um, and then... You, you would set up your username or well, your username is your email address that you enroll with. So just if you've got multiple email addresses, just remember which email address you were under when you enrolled in the program. And you will set up a password. So you'll want to make note of your password because you'll need to get need to get that or have that to get into the funding area. Um, so once you do enroll, then anytime you come and um, onto the home page, right to the left of that join now button is um, a link to say um, sign in. So that's where you would click to sign in with your username, your email address, and your password. 
And then once you do that, that automatically is going to jump you to what we call your dashboard. Um, and that has all sorts of information. We'll take a look at that in just a minute. Um, uh, I'm seeing a question there in the chat. Is there a set number of smoothie kits available? Um, no, we don't um, have a set number available. Um, that is um, up to, this is a nationwide offer that is uh, managed in each state and regional um, area of the National Dairy Council. So um, ADA Northeast is um, your dairy council. So um, it varies from place to place and um, it's, there is not a set number. Um, so it's, it, they're looking for the, the top applications. So you want to, that's part of the point of this is to help you uh, develop a really top application. Anyhow, okay, so your, your dashboard um, is where you would go to, um, once you log in on Fuel Up to Play 60, it bounces you right there. And there is a section on my funding, and that's where you're going to go to find information on um, this application and where you would go for looking for um, your decision and that sort of thing. So you'll see that in just a minute. Um, okay, uh, next slide, please, Anthony. Great. Um, I mentioned that there were some resources on the web. This is a screenshot of that web page. Um, when you go, hopefully we'll have time and I can go live online to show you everything where it is on the website. Um, but there is um, on the main website, there is a link at the top in the top nav bar called funding. And if you click on funding, it's going to bring you to a page that's got uh, that looks like that image over there on the left hand side. If you scroll down on that page, you will come to those printable information sheets, which is blown up there on the right hand side of this screen. And so you can get to what the sample application form looks like. So that's a PDF of the application. So that's something that you'd want to uh, download and print out and work with it to um, develop your application. It's also got um, eligibility and guidelines for um, applying and limits on funding, you know, different categories that we have limits on and all sorts of different guidelines there. Um, there is an equipment catalog. Uh, I believe um, Anthony distributed some um, attachments with the uh, meeting invitation for this webinar. And um, in that attached there, um, the equipment catalog was one of the things. Also, the sample application was on there. The next one is the funding ideas. That's another thing that was uh, connected to or uh, attached to that meeting invitation. So the equipment catalog just shows you some um, suppliers of uh, healthy eating equipment and gives you contact information for those suppliers so that you can uh, investigate that if there's uh, things there that you would like to purchase with your funding. Um, and the funding ideas just goes through each play in the playbook and gives you ideas of what you might want to consider purchasing for those particular plays. Um, and last on that list is the school wellness investigation. Um, that is, um, if anybody uses that, that is, it's an assessment to help you decide um, what areas of your school could use um, or present an opportunity for improving them in terms of healthy eating or physical activity. If you go to use it, it is a very helpful tool, but I do want to say if you look at it, it's been around for a number of years, so it might look like, is this the current one? And yes, it is. Um, we have not updated it, um, so we've just stuck with the, the one that's been there for, for a number of years, but that is a helpful tool if you um, want to do, if you're new to this and trying to figure out, well, what should we do in our school? That helps you um, pinpoint some areas that you might want to um, address to improve the healthy um, healthiness of your school. Okay, uh, next slide, please. All right. So let's say you want to apply for funds. What should you do? First thing I would suggest doing is to print that sample application off fueluptoplay60.com or you have a copy of that attached to your meeting invitation as well. So take a look at that. Um, and then you wanna go look online at the playbook on the Fuel Up To Play 60 website. Um, you will see what at the top nav bar, there is a, um, a link there for the playbook. And that outlines those healthy eating and physical activity plays that I just showed you in a list a couple slides ago. And you could get a, a little description of each play. And um, 
then decide which ones your school would want to focus on because you will need when you first go on to start an application you will need to identify right then and there which plays you want to do which healthy eating play which physical activity play so it's important that you know that before you sit down to start your application and it's a really good idea if you work as a team on this involve PE, involves school nutrition, involves some students, um, a program advisor. Um, everybody uh, can get together and come up with a plan for your school. So uh, that's, that's, a, that's a good way to make sure you're addressing all areas. And once again, um, don't forget the little tip down there that you want to uh, include dairy and, and ways to increase dairy in your school. Um, your school nutrition manager would be key at helping you to figure out some ideas on increasing dairy. Um, certainly the smoothie kit, that's part of the reason for the smoothie kit. There's yogurt. So that's an easy way to increase dairy in your school. But um, there, there are plenty of other ways I would work with your school nutrition manager. And um, also reach out to, um, to Anthony and his team. They can, um, they can certainly help you if you're not sure what you want to do. Um, they can give you some ideas and help you along there. And I'll, I'll add, Jenny, that there's, there's quite a few of my, my favorite school nutrition directors on this call right now. And what they don't want to see is somebody making smoothies in the uh, gym room um, without, <laughs> without getting approval from them um, and it being done in a safe and organized way. So you want to make sure that you have a conversation about the healthy eating play so that they have the capacity and availability to do it. You don't want to surprise them with the blender at the beginning of the school year and say, can you put smoothies on, on the menu now? They want to be able to plan for it staff-wise, make sure that they have the additional equipment to serve it. So I know that they'll give me a high five or say something in the chat like amen um, that, that I'm saying that, but you want to make sure that you are um, communicating with the powers to be, not only your school nutrition staff, but like you said, also a school administration. You don't want to surprise school administration with this grant that they're not prepared for um, and they want to be able to implement, implement it right so that when that reporting comes at the end of the year, you can say that you successfully um, implemented what you said in your original grant application. Uh, Anthony just mentioned, you know, your, your school administration. So I just want to mention that in the application at the end of it, there is an area where you will need to um, say that you have the um, uh, agreement, approval, whatever the right word is there, um, from your administration, your principal, and then also other key people on this um, approval to go forward with this grant. And that would be from um, the principal, the school nutrition manager, the physical ed um, education lead, um, and um, your program advisor, whoever that may be, if you are not them. And you need to actually give us your, give their email addresses because they will be included in communications about your grant um, once uh, decision time comes. So um, best to just bring them in from the very start and help plan as a group. And students are key here. Um, please don't forget what they can do in your schools and um, how they can help implement things and take a real burden off of you and help you implement things. Okay. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so um, here is a picture of the dashboard. As I mentioned, you'll go to the dashboard um, as soon as you log in. And, um, and right now we are on the My Funding section of the dashboard. So when you, when you log in to Fuel Up to Play 60, it will take you to one, the this, this starting opening page of the dashboard. But over there on the left-hand side of that uh, graphic, you'll see um, a blue bar and it says welcome at the top of that. Uh, arrow number two is pointing to what says my funding. That's where you will click to find all the information on anything to do with, with funding. And arrow number three is pointing to a get started button. So that box there um, where get started appears is information on the application, the open date, the close date, um, the special offer that is there, and the get started button. Um, just to orient you here, over to the right of that get started box, the other boxes that you see, that's where you would go to check 
for if you have any current applications or recent applications that you put in for various things uh, connected to Fuel Up to Play 60, you would find them there under that current applications box. Um, and also um, any reporting that has been required um, in past years, that appears in that funds final reporting box below there. So that page is all things funds. Okay, next slide, please, Anthony. Um, so just talking about the planning process, um, as I've mentioned already, download a PDF or use the PDF that you already have of the application to help you start to plan, involve the other colleagues in the planning process and including student leaders. And then um, you might want to gather some information before you go to apply, just to make your process when you sit down in front of your computer to do this application, it's a little easier for you. Um, one of the things that you probably don't know off the top of your head is the employer identification number. Um, that's a district-wide number um, that is required on the application, and that's just for accounting purposes that they need to have that. So um, you want to get your EIN number. Your, um, if you don't know that uh, or where to go for that, my suggestion would be go to your school front office, the principal's office, you know, and they should be able to um, give you that number or direct you to where you could get it. Um, and then in the application, we do ask what your average daily participation is for breakfast and lunch. That is the average number of students that are participating in breakfast and the number that are participating in lunch, um, two separate numbers. And um, that is asked for on the application. So um, you'll wanna go to your school nutrition folks and ask for that information. Um, don't make up the information, please. We, we wanna have that honest information there uh, to, to help understand the, the uh, climate of your school, what's going on at your school. Okay, next slide, please. Um, and then once you go to complete your application, um, here are just some tips that sound pretty simple, but um, if you pay attention to these, you'll get a lot further with your application. First of all, just read all the directions and pay attention to the guidelines in the application. Um, that will that helps you immensely. And that's not just our application, that's any grant application. If you've applied for other grants, I'm sure you are well aware of that. Um, and also make sure that you're clear and thorough in any of your descriptions or responses, because um, when people go to review this, they're not a mind reader. They don't know you, they don't know your school. So um, it's really helpful if you make sure that you're clear and thorough in your descriptions and somebody from the outside who knows nothing about your school could understand what you're trying to tell us. Also, keep in mind that you want to propose ideas that are sustainable. Um, so ideas that you can implement with funding in the year that you would be awarded funding, but they can continue after that. Uh, you know, the funding that goes to you, we like to know that it's making a difference year after year. You might need some money to get it started, but hopefully then it can continue on its own after that. So just keep that in mind when you're proposing um, what ideas you're proposing for physical activity and for healthy eating. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, this is more on completing the application. Um, remember to include inc ways to increase dairy in your healthy eating plan. I know I sound like a broken record in saying that, but I just want to remind you because that is vitally important. Um, without that, um, your application probably isn't going to stand much of a chance. So make sure that you've got that included. Um, there is a budget section that you need to fill out in the application, and this is where um, one area that's really helpful to make sure that you have di uh, good descriptions of what you're proposing to purchase, and include the quantities too. There is a there is a column for quantities, but make sure that is completed. And then when you're all done your application, uh, you can save it as I mentioned earlier. You might have somebody come back in from your school and read through the application who hasn't maybe been involved in the planning of it, or, or maybe it is somebody that was involved in the planning, but somebody who hasn't filled out the application, have them read it. Do they understand what you're asking, what you're proposing, um, and, and pay attention to uh, areas that they may not know, and then you can uh, fix up your application. So when it goes through the review outside of your school, we know what you're asking for. Okay, 
Next slide. Um, as far as decision notifications, um, the decisions are made about eight weeks after the deadline. So the deadline is April 28th. So um, you would be getting decisions. Uh, they'll, they'll be coming out in June is when you would get it. Towards uh, mid to late June is when you would be getting um, at, uh, notifications. Um, they are posted on your dashboard. We just saw your dashboard. You would get a notice there. There would be a link where you would click and open a, a notification and it will say, congratulations, you're approved. Or it would say, sorry, we hope this isn't the case, but sorry, we're, we couldn't approve your application. So um, what happens is we send out an email to all the schools that have applied and say, hey, your, application, your decision's on your dashboard. Go, go look at your dashboard. So one thing to know is that uh, that notification that your decision is available goes out to you if you are applying. It also goes to all those other people that I mentioned, your principal, um, your school nutrition director, the PE lead, and your program advisor. They all will get that same email. Um, and one thing to know is that in your application, once somebody starts it, they are considered the starter of the application. And nobody else can get into that application from your school unless the starter, that's you, that gives them permission to see the application. And we do that just so there is some privacy that, you know, people aren't, uh, you know, getting in and, and mix, mix, messing with maybe an application that you've already started and changing things on you. We want you to know that John Doe has access to that application as well. So even though the application um, uh, or the decision notice will be posted on your dashboard, anybody who wants to see that needs to be enrolled in Go Up to Play 60 and, and then go to the dashboard to see it. So if your principal gets that email, they may say, I'm not enrolled in Peel Up to Play 60, I can't see it. So you'd need to communicate with them, either help them get enrolled or print out a copy of the decision. So just, just know that it's not automatic that they can go see that. Um, okay, um, as I said, your application, if your application is approved, the check and or equipment will be delivered at back to school time. Um, and the funding, we intend that to be used in the school year. So it would be funding that would be available come August or September um, for the 21-22 school year. And um, the idea is that you would exhaust that funding by the end of the school year. Um, and if your application is not approved, I don't like to talk in the negative, but if that happens, <clears throat> all is not lost. Um, there will be another round the following year and you could easily apply again. What I would suggest is if that happens, that you might want to uh, contact Anthony or somebody from ADA Northeast and um, just go over your application with them. Um, find out what is it that could be improved upon to make you a more successful applicant for the next round of funding. Okay, um, next slide, please. Um, Final reporting, Anthony made mention of this earlier. Um, we do require reporting from all schools that get funding. Um, and that happens at the end of the school year. Um, and it's completed online, just like you go to find your application in your dashboard, that's where you would go to find your final reporting. Uh, typically the, app, the online reporting opens in April and it's about a month that you have to complete it and do in May. Um, just know it's really important for you to fill out that final reporting if you are awarded funding, because if you don't, um, you may not be eligible to get funding from that point forward. That is one of the criteria that is used um, for deciding on an application if it can be approved or not, is you have to have completed your final reporting from past um, opportunities that you've been awarded. Um, and uh, just as far as what you need to think about that would be final reporting, I know this is like way far away to think about, but just to give you an idea, um, we would want to know about how you implemented your plays. Um, we would want to know about the impact that the plays and the funding had. How did you spend the money? Um, what, what difference did they make in your school? That sort of thing. 
And then we do collect some numbers from you. Um, typically ADP will we'll have a pre-ADP, so before you got the funding, and then a post-ADP after you've gotten your funding. So what that allows us to do is see, take a snapshot of the before you got money, and then after money, and what happened, what changed in your school? What changed as far as participation in breakfast or lunch? You know, did it go up because of the healthy eating plagues that you implemented or something else that you changed in your, um, in your school? Um, what happened in physical activity? That, those sort of things. Um, and then uh, there are some, we do collect data on dairy metrics as well, um, looking at how much milk um, and yogurt was um, was utilized by your school in the year that you had the funding because that's of vital interest to our dairy farmers to be able to say, hey, look at what, what difference this made in the school. They went from X to triple X, you know, over the course of the school year because of the funding that they got. Um, and when it comes to those numbers, make sure you involve your school nutrition manager because they'll be able to help you um, know the correct numbers to report and also help you make sense of them. Um, and next slide, please, Anthony. Um, and then just who to contact here. So if you have any questions, there's Anthony's um, email address there, and you can reach out to him. And also um, down there, number two, there is a help desk for Fuel Up to Play 60. Um, I would use that help desk for technical issues. Anthony is the best person, Anthony and his team are the best people for content of your application. But as far as any technical problems that you may have, we hope you don't, but they do crop up. Um, that the help desk is very, uh, is who you want to contact. The other thing I want to say is um, just in timing of when you're going to submit your application, we're all guilty of waiting till the very last minute to do something, or many of us are. <laughs> I am definitely. <laughs> but if you can try to at least give yourself a little leeway, don't wait till the 11th hour. Don't wait till 11 o'clock the night before the deadline or 11 o'clock the night of the deadline to be starting your application or even trying to submit it because we, you may run into some technical glitch. It may not be anything to do with you we might have some glitch on our end. We hope that doesn't happen, but um, sometimes things go awry. And so if you give yourself a little leeway, it'll reduce your stress level a whole lot and make the process a lot smoother. So just keep that in mind to try to, you know, get it in a couple days, as far in advance as you can, but, you know, a couple days before the deadline. Just so you know, we do not start reviewing any applications until the deadline has um, has arrived. So there are no decisions made on anything. It doesn't, it doesn't get you any better points for submitting early versus the day of the deadline. We don't even look at that. So take your time to plan it properly, but don't wait till the last minute to do it. <laughs> so um, I think that is the end. Um, Anthony, do you want to um, go online to look at anything? Yeah, I, what I was I was going to piggyback on what you were saying, but I'll give you a chance to fire up the SMA um, and share your screen while I'm talking a little bit. Um, but okay. I, I just want to I just want to piggyback on what Jenny said in regards to we're here to help. Um, so you know that American Dairy Association Northeast works with seven NFL teams. Washington, Eagles, Steelers, Jets, Giants, Bills, and Ravens. And in each of those territories, we have a nutrition specialist. Um, and that person can kind of help navigate and guide you through those final decisions on which direction you want to go in with your grant. We give you a lot of ideas. Um, Jenny gave a great tip um, on secret, and I'll whisper it again. Infuse dairy in your application um, because we're the dairy council. Um, but don't only share it, don't only look at our ideas, look at also things um, regarding new innovative things that you've heard from students. You know, we know that students sometimes are not always happy with the choices they have at breakfast and lunch. What things would they like to see? A breakfast taco, a cheesier pizza, some cheese whiz, um, things of that nature, a smoothie bar. And it doesn't have to be something that you need to provide every day, but talk to your cafeteria staff. Could we do a smoothie of the month? Is this something that we can do? Um, we know from, from you know, back 
doing this for a long time, that if you do a smoothie of the month, the participation rate is going to shoot up to the roof. The cafeteria staff is going to have to respond because the kids will be looking for it and want it. So what we want to do is engage kids instead of bringing those little black plastic bags in from the store when they get back to a uh, to the real world when we're done with this new normal, that they're going to be picking a balanced meal that the cafeteria staff has out for them. And that's why we do this work that we do, because we want to put healthy options, physical fitness um, strategies, engaging in recess and that kind of thing. Uh, every time I participate, I learn something new from Jenny. But what I will really want to say about this application and my experience is, it's not like giving your firstborn or a kidney. It's very easy. It's yeah. all in the system. So you're if you do something wrong, the system won't let you click next. So it's not overwhelming. Um, although it's very competitive, it's, we're also very generous. Um, so there's also all kinds of opportunities. And if you don't win the first time and you submit an application the next year, we, we do take that into consideration. You can always reach out to say, hey, I didn't get approved. And we can tell you why and we can help you to tweak your application. So if you need to be connected with your school nutrition specialist in your neighborhood, my email address is right there. I can share with that person, connect the dots. If you have any particular questions for me, um, you know, flag football, they're doing some great things with kits. You know that a lot of PE teachers on this call, there were some things that were challenges with the break release and that kind of thing. They, they've improved the kits 100%. So that, that's definitely something to look at. Socializing with recess, um, at-home workout kits. There's all kinds of things that you can ask for in terms of this. Even though we list a play, you can connect the dots and make one of these plays work for what you're trying to do. So don't feel like that the tips and strategies you're locked into. If you have something new, if you have a focus group at your school that you want to talk to and you, they really want to try some things, you can also use those things. I did want to open up for any questions. I, I kind of think I responded to most of them in the chat, but if anybody wanted to jump off mute and ask a verbal question, I'll allow you to do that now before we share the um, SMA. Does anybody have any questions for Jenny or myself? Is there anybody who received a grant before in the past and just want to share a testimony? I see a few of you on here. Please don't make me call on you. So, <laughs> so unmute yourself and just share about your experience with completing the grant application. Not to put anybody on the spot, but I, I see some people who've gotten awarded funding in the past. Anthony, I'll be happy to, to speak up. This is my uh, guy Hugh. Hugh. Go ahead. Hugh brought by him in uh, Northern Virginia. Uh, love working with both Jenny and Anthony anytime I get a chance. Uh, but I've had um, success, uh, I think at least two um, two grants, maybe even three if I, my memory is uh, not as good as it was. But um, it, it is, it's, it's exactly how Jenny explained it and Anthony as well. It's, it's pretty much simple and straightforward. Um, you know, and I always think about when teachers are talking to students, like you guys are sort of to us, when they're telling you what to put in the application, make sure you do. They're basically giving you some answers to um, some of these questions. You have to inc incorporate uh, dairy in one way or another. Um, that's, you know, that's the whole idea behind this uh, program other than, you know, healthy eating. Um, but anyway, I had a lot of success. We, um, a couple of examples, we um, got some uh, very nice decorations and menu boards for our cafeteria where um, we discovered the students didn't really know what was being served for breakfast each day. So in our healthy eating application, we, we um, asked for menu boards and display banners and just ways for it to grab the kids' attention when they come in the building. And we ended up putting the menu on there for each day and highlighted what it was. It certainly did increase participation. Um, with that, at the same time, the same funds that we were uh, granted, uh, we purchased two things. We called it Refresh Recess, and we used um, purchase paint to put some new things down on the recess blacktop. And we incorporated the kids, hey, what would you like to see be painted out here since you're going to be playing and stuff? Mm -hmm. um, we didn't use all those funds, so we used extra funds, some, some of that, all that money, um, and bought um, many stationary bicycles for our school library. So then there's quiet reading time. The kids are sitting at their desk pedaling um, and reading at the same time. Great, great. Thanks for sharing here. So form to table, sustainability, all, you know, anything that kind of connects the dots uh, with healthy lifestyle. We, we, you know, we preach this all the time, but there's nine essential uh, nutrients in dairy. And we want to make sure that students are making the right choices early on. 
Uh, but I, I really, really do appreciate that. Um, if there's no more questions and nobody else wants to share, Jenny, you can share your screen um, so we can take a quick tutorial of the SMA and, and we'll be done. Terrific. Um, Anthony, we, you need to stop sharing so I can start sharing. <laughs> Great. Done. Thank you. Um, Okie doke. Um, one thing I want to mention to you before I get into this, Anthony just reminded me um, in his comments, um, when you go to look at that paper application that uh, Anthony sent out, you may download it. You go, I forget how many pages it is, but it looks like it's going to be daunting, but it's not. There is There are a lot of the last couple pages, like the last three or plus pages is all like terms and guidelines and things like that, which you need to pay attention to, but that's, you read it once and you're done with it as long as you follow the rules. But, um, you know, that that's just there for reference. Um, so, and then throughout the application, there are directions. So don't let, don't open that up and go, oh my gosh, I can't do this. Take a minute to just look at the application. It really isn't that hard. Um, so, and there's a healthy eating section, and then we duplicate some of the questions again in physical activity, but, you know, addressing two different topics. So just, just take your time and look at it. It's, I say it's not that bad, and I hope you find it the same. Um, okay, uh, hopefully everybody can see, no, you can't see my screen yet there. Now you should be able to see my screen. Okay, um, so this is the homepage of Fuel to Play 60. Um, and I have already logged in, so you don't see the, the join now or um, you've got the sign out here, but this is where you would find that. Um, notice here we've got a little link here that will go to the dashboard. Um, so we talked about that earlier. But before I go there, I just want to show you, um, here is the playbook right here. So if I click on that, I'm going to scroll down. And here are all the different plays. The uh, green ones are come first and they're all the healthy eating plays. It gives a qu quick little um, description right here. And then you can go down and open this up and you can see more information on each play. Um, some of them have a quick start guide to as to how can you quickly get this implemented in your school. Um, and and then we've got down here the blue plays, the blue headers. These are all the physical activity plays. So this is a page that you want to look at before you fill out your application. Um, because like I said, the first thing you need to do in your application is tell us what plays you're going to do. So pay attention to this page and um, that can help you out a whole lot. Okay, so that's the playbook. And I mentioned funding. <laughs> and by the way, where I am right now, you could see the playbook, you could see the this funding page that we're going to go to right now um, without being logged in. It's your dashboard that you can't see when um, if you're not logged in. So um, I just clicked on funding. You've got some general information. The eligibility and guidelines for the funds program are there. FAQs, there's some FAQs there. And then if we have additional funding opportunities that are going on, like the flag football kit, you would find information on there or if there are other opportunities. So that's a place to look at um, also if you're looking for funding. Is there anything else out there? Um, I'm going to just click on the general information right now. And this is what you saw up on the screen. Um, I showed you some printable sheets that were available. So here we have information about funds. Um, you can even start your application right from here. If you have not enrolled in Fuel Up to Play 60, um, it will take you to an area to enroll. Um, and if you haven't logged in, it will ask you to log in there. Um, so you can go either to your dashboard or even right here, you can start an application. Um, and um, qualifications, and here's our equipment offer. There is a flyer about the smoothie kit. That was also included. I don't know if I mentioned that, but that was also included in what Anthony sent out with the meeting invitation, one of the PDFs. So there's information about that. Um, and there are um, smoothie resources here for schools as well, in case you're thinking about applying for the smoothie kit. Um, and then um, down here, here are these printable information sheets, and I had that showing up on the screen, so all of the things that you could print out um, are right here. Um, I'm going to scroll up to the top for a minute, 
Um, also, you could get the sample application right here if you don't if you don't see it. That and that is the same as the PDF that you already have that Anthony sent you. That same thing that is linked right here. Um, I'm going to go to the dashboard now. So I'm going to click up here on the right hand side. And sometimes it takes a minute. There we go. So here we are on the dashboard and I just came to the main page of my dashboard. It's got my name up there because I'm, I'm already logged in um, and you have to be, like I said, to get to your dashboard. So if I'm interested in funding, I'm going to come down here to the my funding section. I'm going to click on that. And then um, if I scroll down here, by the way, um, if you happen to be involved with multiple schools and you're, um, you're linked to both school or multiple schools, check up here um, when you go to start an application or anything that you're doing. Make sure because this name that appears up here will be the name that appears on the application. So if you're an XYZ school, but you're also linked to ABC school, make sure you pick the right school up here and have the right school up here when you go to apply for the, um, the grant um, or anything that you're doing. And, and you can um, change your schools and um, link yourself to other schools in your district right here through your dashboard. Um, I'm going to scroll down here. Here's the information on funds for fuel up to play 60. Um, this is similar to what we just saw on the funding page. Um, open close dates, the equipment offer, links to the, the flyers about that, and, and a get started button, that same get started button that will take you to the application. Um, and here are other um, applications if you, you or your school had applied for them. You would see this if you were linked in the application, if you had permission in the application. If you don't or you weren't, you would not be seeing that. So we try to keep, you know, things safe that not every, it's not public information that everybody can go in and see. Um, and then down here are also those printable information sheets that we just saw on the, um, on the funding page of Fuel Up to Play 60, not, but this is the exact same information repeated here. Um, I'm looking at the clock. Um, I'm gonna go in and I'll just show you when, if you go to start an application, here we go. Uh, let's see, is this going to work for me? Um, you know what? I can't do this here because this is a test area. And before we launched the application, it was all tested. So um, it's showing that we already started. That's fine, Jenny. I, I, I just want to kind of take my hat off to you. I truly appreciate you taking time to do this today. Um, I, I want to be respectful of people's dinner times yeah. as well. Hopefully people have uh, some pizza and other dairy products coming their way. Um, but again, guys, you have my email address, my phone number is available um, in my signature. So if you have questions, if you get stumped, let my team um, help you through the process so that we can get you um, approved in the funds that you need to have a successful school year. Um, let's give Jenny a round of applause. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, thanks for the opportunity and good luck to everybody. All right, guys. So everybody have a great night. If there's, I'll give one last chance for final questions. Looks like we have a couple in it, or those are just thank yous in the chat, right? So uh, again, you can reach out to me directly if you have any questions. Thank you, guys. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.